Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks for you. Welcome back to my kitchen. So you've made your sourdough starter. Now what? Okay, so if you want to just take a break, that's completely fine. Just put your sourdough in the fridge, your sourdough starter in the fridge, and remember to feed it once a week. What happens if you don't feed it once a week? Well, it may start to go really dormant and you may have to feed it twice a day for a couple days to get the oomph back. Something if like you're that. ready to start on something, I have a basic recipe for you. This is a King Arthur's recipe, their King Arthur brand, not the King Arthur from, you know, the, the medieval times. The King Arthur brand of flour has a basic sourdough recipe that I'm gonna show you. And please subscribe below, give me a thumbs up, and I would love to hear from you with a comment. Thanks. Before we begin, let's look at our starter. You see how it rose and then fell? That's fine. Give it a little sniff. Should have a nice sour smell. You see that it is a little runny. It still has some viscosity to it, but it's like a really runny pancake batter. We are going to measure out a 240 gram measurement of each of the ingredients and get this all mixed up. Why 240? We need to beef this up because we're going to use a lot of it and we still need some left over for our starter. Put your rubber band up to where it is. Make sure when you're doing this big feeding that you have a big jar. And there you have it. We want this to double in six to eight hours. Sometimes this will double in two. So watch. What we want is we want it to double before it falls. That's when we want to bake with it. If it falls a little and is a little concave, it's okay. But it's best if it has the convex. Did I get those wrong? I don't know. But it's best to have a dome. But if it has a little dip, that's okay too. It has been two hours and 20 minutes. We are not doubled in size yet. But we're getting there. It's been four hours. And we definitely have some doubling going on here. Looks great, so we can use this. This is called active starter. It's active. You could literally watch this grow. You could see the bubbles popping and creating new bubbles. So this is active starter, ripe active starter that you would make bread with. Now, when it's flat, when it's or your discard those you can do other recipes with but this is a healthy dough that you could make bread with and that you do not need yeast your yeast is in here you have captured it from the air you've captured wild yeast that was actually in the flour and you have made your own yeast culture here to create bread we are going to start and measure out our sourdough. Now all the descriptions and amounts will be at the end of this in the read more section in the description. So we are gonna start by pouring this baby. This uses a lot of starter, that's why I really bulked it up. Now what you wanna do is I would leave this out for a while longer and then I would feed it again and then put it in the fridge. And again, your feeding is always one to one to one. So I'd measure this out. This, this is probably just 113 grams right here, 115 grams. So use all this and then add the rest, add your water and your flour. So we are going to add all our ingredients minus the salt. We are not putting our salt in yet. So we're putting our starter. We have whole wheat flour. regular flour, and then our water. We're gonna mix this all up, and then we're gonna let it sit for an hour. And the term, correct me if I'm saying this wrong, is autolise. This first sitting, it's not a rise, it's so that the moisture can, the flour can soak up the moisture. We just have to incorporate this all together. And some recipes say to only let it sit for, you know, 30 minutes. But I've looked at quite a few, and an hour is more common for your auto lease. It's incorporated enough, and now we're going to let it sit for one hour. Our auto lease is done, and it's time to add our salt. Okay, I'm confessing, I forgot to add my salt, 
and my bread still tasted good. So I am here to show you as a beginner, it's okay to make a few mistakes, be flexible and keep going, have confidence. We are kneading this bread for five minutes. You see how I'm doing a circular motion there, pulling the little sides in? That's what you wanna do with this first kneading. Sourdough can be a sticky dough. Try not to use too much flour. Get flour on your hands. You could use a little water on your hands. Just don't make it a non-sticky dough. We are gonna let this rise for an hour, but you know what? Deviation number two. I let mine rise three hours because I had somewhere to go. And you know what? Everything still was okay. My dough was fermenting in that time. It was going to be more sour. The longer I let it sit, the more sour it gets. For our second knead, it's going to be three minutes and we're doing an envelope technique. We're just folding it over. We're digging under, turning it, stretching and folding it over. As I keep working this dough, it is getting sticky. So I'm having to put a little flour on it. Not a generous amount, just a little. And that will help out. You just wanna keep doing this. You're looking for about three minutes. You want your dough to be soft and supple. And you'll learn with time what that means. So here lies my problem. I get this far in the baking process and my aunt invites us to dinner. So do I cancel dinner? It's my husband's birthday. Some recipes show that they put the dough in the fridge overnight and that helps to make it even more sour. So I thought, you know what, what do I have to lose except for a couple bucks worth of flour? My husband's birthday is more important. So in the fridge it went, and I'm making it the next day. We shall see how it turns out. All right, I pull my cold dough out of the refrigerator. It is so full of bubbles. So I decide, okay, I need to just pat this down and get these bubbles out of it and let it rest for a while and rise and get to room temperature. So I just go around, I get into a nice ball, pat all those bubbles out and I let it sit for an hour and rise and get to room temperature. Then I start working with it again. Now we're back to following the King Arthur recipe, which is to cut our dough into two pieces and we're gonna do a pre-shape. We're gonna shape these just mildly and then let them rest for 20 minutes. Now we're pulling each section in, creating a ball, and that this is our pre-shape. You say, why do I have to pre-shape? Why can't I just shape? Well, you know, the gluten is stubborn. So pre-shaping helps you to get the shape you want, but then let it rest and let the gluten relax, and then you can shape it again. And the gluten will participate and be a little less testy. While that dough is resting, get out two tea towels and smother them with flour inside of a bowl. See how I have a bowl there? That is what my dough is gonna be in. Okay, our dough is ready to be shaped. Again, we are just gonna pull the sides up and in and press them in and go around twice, pulling them up and in. That creates a nice ball. Now get the flour out of the way because we want the surface a little sticky. We're going to just tuck and roll here. We're going to tuck and roll it under. And if your surface is too, has too much flour, you won't be able to do this little tuck and roll well. Oh, it looks beautiful. And then you're going to want to test your, your dough and just press on it. See if it has a little spring to it. Oh, beautiful. Place seam side up in your floured tea towel roll and let rise for two and a half hours. Now the challenging part, how am I supposed to get this dough out on its surface? Make sure you have parchment paper here, guys. It's very helpful. Okay, so we're just, we're just trying our best here to pick this up inside of this tea towel and flip it over without like having it lose its shape. 
and there you go. If you don't put enough flour on that tea towel, you are going to ruin the shape of your bread. So flour it up. Time for scoring your bread. To me this is a little scary, like I just want to put a little itty bitty line because I'm afraid if I cut too deep, all my bubbles are going to escape and my bread's just going to deflate. That is not what's going to happen. Make sure you get that score pretty deep. That quarter inch, this is where all the air is going to be released so your bread doesn't turn into weird shapes with big old bubbles on one side. There I am again. We are putting this into a 450 degree preheated oven. We also have a Dutch oven underneath that's been in there that whole time and we are pouring a cup of boiling water in it. We are 20 minutes in and look at this beautiful loaf. We preheated the oven to 500, but after we put the bread in, I put it down to 450. It is looking fantastic. 30 minutes is up, let's check on our baby. Okay, it's looking beautiful, looking very pretty. My water is all gone out of the pan, but I'm gonna leave it in longer to get a browner crust that creates um, a lot more flavor to have a dark crust. So we're gonna bake this another 10 minutes and then on to loaf number two. Nice and hard. So we are gonna go on to number two. Set to cool on a rack if you have one. Okay, number two is gonna be a bit harder. I'm trying it a different way. We're going to cook it in a, um, in a Dutch oven. We shall see. We're gonna get it out on here. If I had the right product called a bread couche, then I wouldn't have to use these tea towels Let's see, oh, okay, there we go. I was gonna say, this one is not coming up well. And see how much this one has been rising for an extra 45 minutes, the other one hasn't. So I think it's gonna be too big to do what I wanna do with it. Get it on here. I'm just gonna try to tuck it under a bit. See if I can get a little. Make it a little smaller. I'm just experimenting here. Okay, that's about the size it's gonna be. Okay, so we're gonna score it. And now we're going to position this pan right up here and we're gonna place it in there. set this over it for the first 10 minutes. All right, like I told you, this is my first time doing this. This is all an experiment. Let's check. Okay. It's not gonna have a blow up. All right. Go another 20 minutes and check it. Now we are 30 minutes in. So we're just gonna open this up and see what we have. Okay, this one um, definitely isn't as pretty as the other. This is the one I had trouble with and I was trying to tuck some of it under because it just went um, so these are the things you do as a beginner and you figure it out and they're both still gonna be delicious. So we're gonna leave this in 10 more minutes and then pull it out. My scores aren't as deep, so it's not as visually pleasing either. So I learned something there. Lots of flour on top there, that's all right. So we are going to let this sit 
And then we're gonna do, we're gonna cut them both open and see what the difference is. And um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. It's time to taste it. Yes. Now this is the, this is the one I think that's gonna taste better. So let's open this up. I haven't learned how to cut bread yet. I've got a great bread knife. Fancy German bread knife. Okay, that is beautiful. Oh man. That looks like you're in a bread market. It's very pretty. Nice crumb, different size holes. Sounds good. Let's that, try it. That looks good. Now I want to cut open this one now. A little too much flour on the top. Um, eh, you really got to get through that crust, which is good. That's what you want. As my dad said, if crust doesn't make your gums bleed, it's not good bread. Is that right. what he says? Yeah. You didn't know that? No. <laughs> 25 years and you didn't know that. This has a beautiful crumb too. And here I thought this one wasn't turning out. It's beautiful inside. Okay, so now we can try it. Yes, let's try it. Yes. Okay. Let me... All right. And here's the other one. Oh, this tear is, has such a good chew into that. I could just. Okay. Trey's already. <laughs> Do I have flour on my face? No. It's good. Mmm. You can really taste the sour. Mm hmm. Because I let it sit in the fridge overnight and we decided to go to dinner with Trey's aunt and uncle, so I couldn't bake my bread, I put it in the fridge. So it was in the fridge overnight fermenting and gave it a good sour flavor. All right, let's try this one. What's the difference? I cooked this one in a Dutch oven. Oh, the okay. first 10 minutes, right, and like, then it was on a hot surface too, right away. There's a definite difference. This one has more chew. Mm -hmm. Spongy. More moisture. Mm -hmm. I like this one better. The spongy one? Mm -hmm. Which one do you like better? Mm. Let me see. I don't know, I think I like the first one better. This one, the center, or it's so soft inside. So making my gums bleed. <laughs> well, no, only your, only the crust is supposed to make your gums bleed, not the inside. Probably don't want to use that as an advertising campaign. I think it should be. I, yeah, I mean, both of them make your gums bleed. Leo, you'd be happy. So there you have it. Trey likes this one better. I like this one better. Try both. And let me know in the comments which one you like better. Thanks for watching Kathy Cooks For You. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and let me know which one you like. Make them both ways. I like them both. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're both going to be eaten, don't get me wrong.